absolutely amazing to see so many people here supporting. Um, we have a series of speakers tonight, and a minute's silence, which will be broken by the choir, uh, who have come together specifically for us tonight here. Pride and Stonewall Cymru came together to organise this event for the whole community because we were horrified by what's happened two nights ago in Orlando. Unfortunately, homophobic hate crimes can happen anywhere, at any time. But this was the worst massacre of LGBT people and their friends in the Western world since the Holocaust. Our gun laws make it harder for this to happen here. But we have been targeted before with nail bombs in London and individual assaults across Britain and here in Wales. What kind of world is it where people would rather see men holding guns than men kissing? Killing rather than kissing. It happened because of hate, but we have to meet with love and we have to meet with pride. Love for each other and pride in our communities. This won't stop us gathering together. It won't stop us dancing, and it won't stop us holding hands, and it won't stop us kissing. It won't stop us holding pride and welcoming you to join us here in Cardiff on August 13th in our parade and in the field. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans people, and all of our families and all of our fra 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 friends <laughs> coming together. We are one community here in Cardiff, united, and tonight proves this. Thank you. Pen. I was in Pulse on Saturday night. 
Normally I don't, I don't wash it off, but I decided to keep it there as the most potent symbol of what we know in the LGBT community. We are one family. These were our brothers and sisters that were killed in the early hours of Sunday morning. You know, uh, gay, cl gay clubs, I suppose, to our community, they're a bit like a, a synagogue or a mosque to, to other communities. You know, they're a symbol, yes, but they're also where we connect with each other, with ourselves. You know, I, I can remember going to uh, a gay club for the uh, first time on my own, and it'll be a familiar experience uh, to many of you, you know, pacing up and down for about 20 minutes outside, nervously trying to gather up from somewhere the courage to go inside. But when I did, when I crossed that threshold, I found a safe space. A place to be myself, possibly for the first time, and a place, a place to be with others like myself there too. And that's why this attack has been an attack on the heart of our very being. You know, this isn't the time for long speeches. I think we're all still, we're still hurting. But we shouldn't be silent or invisible either. You know, we've heard already parts of the media trying to airbrush us as a community out of our own tragedy. We've heard right-wing politicians on both sides of the Atlantic using this hateful attack as an excuse to create, to generate hate in others and build barriers where there should be bridges. It's good to see members of the uh, different faith communities here but, you know, in our own experience, we know this, don't we, in the LGBT community, LGBT community. No single religion has a monopoly on homophobia. And, you know, when we, when we look at attacks of hate throughout human history, they're not, they're not the result of one single ideology. They're the result of one single emotion, hatred, which thrives on bigotry and discrimination. And as that great American novelist Ernest Gaines said, you know, what is it about a culture where it's more comfortable to see two men holding guns than to see two men holding hands? Or, you know, in the month where we said goodbye to Muhammad Ali, you know, more comfortable to see two men fighting than two men kissing. We have to, if we're going to declare war on anything, as a result of this terrible tragedy, let's declare war on hate and the discrimination bigotry and horror for me as And we can start here and now on these, uh, at these steps to use this building behind me to do what it was there for, to dare to be different. We can end in Wales, the ban on gay men giving blood. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I, uh, I correct that because uh, I'm uh, allergic to politicians lying. Um, <laughs> You are allowed to give uh, blood as a gay man uh, as long as you're celibate. But I can tell you there weren't many of them in, in person. <laughs> <laughs> Let's end that, that ban. That, that same ban trying to give blood to help their own community and refuse uh, uh, because of the ban there too. Wouldn't it be wonderful, you know, out of this tragedy that we in Wales decided to lead to end this ban, you know? responding to the shedding of our blood by allowing us to give blood as an act of generosity and love for the past of our hearts.
I'm going to hand you over now to our ready to see this, Jim, Dowd, and Shuri. Jim Stewart from Evangelical Alliance Wales. We were shocked, outraged, and saddened as a tragic news broke yesterday morning of events in Orlando. This abhorrent homophobic act of gross inhumanity was committed against the LGBT community, for whom the West will now seem a less secure place. Evangelical Alliance Wales stands together in solidarity with LGBT people in Wales against every act of hatred. We remember all who lost their lives in Orlando and pledge our commitment to work together with others for a Wales in which we can all enjoy security and peaceful coexistence. Within our faith communities, we must also do all that we can to ensure that a culture is not accepted whereby hatred and discrimination against LGBT people is justified and given legitimacy. I'm chairman of the South Wales Islamic Centre in Alice Street in Tom. And I'd like to welcome you all by saying Assalamu Alaikum. May some blessings be with you all. As you know, Islam, the true Islam, is a religion of peace. And when we hear of atrocities like this that has happened in Orlando, it saddens us greatly because the majority of Muslims are trying to live good, clean lives and mix in with their communities. And if any of you know any Muslims, neighbours or whatever, you will know that the majority of Muslims are good people. But we have to... This one man has committed an atrocity and all of us have to pay as a result of it. Islam does not preach violence. These people who commit these acts are doing it for their own reasons, nothing to do with the religion of Islam. And we, we all feel for these people who have been killed and their families and uh, all it takes is a bit of patience and respect for one another. If we all respected one another, we'd all be living in a friendlier world. But the world at the moment is turned upside down. But uh, all we can do is pray and hope that things will change in the future. Thank you very much. Such criminals the world over violate our religion 
every day. By bringing harm to other human beings. They twist, distort, and corrupt our religion until it no longer bears any resemblance to the merciful way of life of hundreds of millions of us that practice Islam across the globe. Mercy is a kindness of the heart and a compassion of the soul. Mercy is supposed to be the trait of a Muslim. It should be how people recognize us. But the heart of this killer was clearly devoid of any mercy. And he should not be held up as being representative of a major world religious community with whom he actually shares very little with. This is not about feeling responsibility for someone else's murderous actions. No soul bears the burden of another. But when someone claims to act on your behalf, or if they or others link their crimes to your personal identity, I believe that you have a duty to speak out. How do we break the cycle of hatred and killing? I don't have the answer. It seems to be all around us, wherever we look. But we also see plenty of love. The gathering here this evening is an expression of that love. How we respond to these events defines us. The peddlers of hate must be met with crowds of people who come out to demonstrate that every time they try to make us fear, we only become braver, and every time they try to drive us apart, we only become closer. We will now take a minute of silence to reflect on this tragedy and to remember that love always wins. <coughs>